something fun. Beta FPV kit, whoop kit. Comes with this awesome transmitter, bind button, very simple to bind. I'll talk about that in a bit. Brushed whoop, compact, looks very nice. And goggles, box goggles with diversity, I guess. Two antenna slots. Everything's charged up, ready to rock. So we hold the power button and boom. And that's another interesting thing was everything came <laughs> batteries fully charged so I don't know if that's just the review unit or what but it also comes with some accessories two antennas and they do bend I'll show you that in a second if you need to bend them because I think these are linear antennas yeah there you go and this one bends like that or you can put it you know however you want um, and then it comes with a charging cable for the goggles because the goggle battery is actually like part of it. It's somewhere in there. Uh, this one, you can remove it. It's just a 1S pack, 350 milliamps. It comes with a few props and it comes with two batteries and a little charger, 1S charger. Charges two packs at once and it has a nice convenient little uh, reader here to read you the volts. So 4.2, this is charged. Let's go ahead and put it in the in the drone and check it out. Why not? Might as well go straight to it. Boom. Let's demonstrate how quickly this thing can get going. Plug it in. Boom. And we're ready to roll. It's on. Boom. We're good to go, guys. And that is a kit. That is what I'm talking about. I want that thing to work out of the box. And I literally, the only thing I did was... I bound this, so to bind, I just turned everything on and I held that button, boop, and it immediately bound. And then I uh, put the channel. So it's, I think they all come on Fat Shark 1. So I just press this button until I got the right channel. And now let's take this thing for a spin. I mean, there's not much to talk about other than what I said. It's a 1S brush whoop, and it's ready to fly. Let's go test it out. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the quad a little bit while I let the video play. And the first thing I wanna talk about was the goggles. So the DVR wasn't very good. Um, I ended up using the DVR on my Dom V3s with the rapid fire. Although this DVR isn't that good either, it was a lot better than this. I don't know if it was just my unit or whatever, but I'll play some of the video from this so you can see what I'm talking about. I ended up changing the antennas thinking that might help, but it was the actual DVR. So the video wasn't that bad at all in the goggles, uh, but when I watched the playback, it was just really bad. A lot of breakup. A um, lot of issues with that. So other than that, but anyway, you put the SD card in here, record, and that's it. So it's pretty simple. I don't think I did anything wrong, but it was just one of those things. I checked some of the other review videos and their DVR was looking all right, but my DVR was not the best. So we ended up recording on these. Um, just thought I should let everyone know. Now about the actual quad, I was pleasantly surprised with how well this thing flew. Um, it flies a lot better than this. And this is, if you don't know, this is the bigger brother, I guess, the HD version with the Cadex camera. You stick the SD card in there and we're flying HD. So they are very similar. This one does not use the BT 2.0 connector. So if you look at this, it flies with these special BT 2.0 packs that increase conductivity and gives it a little more power, I guess because it does actually need it. Cause one S for something this heavy, um, with these little bitty props, it needs some some more juice. So that's why this has the BT 2.0, but this one uses the regular PH uh, 2.0 connector. So any of your standard whoop packs that you have, 1S packs, will uh, fit with this. It's compatible. It had good range on it. I never lost RSSI. I never even got close to it. I never even lost video. I got sketchy on some parts, but I just easily turned around and came back. Now this does not run on Betaflight like this one does. Um, this one runs on Silverware or something like that, a different flight software. And I guess that I appreciate that for something like this. And 
that's probably another reason why it bounds so easily. I didn't have to press any buttons on here or anything. I just literally held this bind button and we were good to go. So it keeps it simple since this is kind of targeted at beginners. You can change the PIDs. You can also change the rates. You can change three rates, your yaw rate, and then you can change another thing that will change the pitch and roll rates together. So I guess you can change two things. It does have a pretty aggressive super rate. Um, I don't know if there's any way to change that. So I guess it's just factored in since you can only change, to my knowledge, those two rates. Um, you can change the OSD and things like that, but that's it, keeps it pretty simple. It got good flight time in the air. Um, very nimble. It could do acro. I, I, I tried to do some acro, but my rates are a little too low by the point where I tried and uh, ended up kind of falling on my ass like that. But I did do some acro with this when I first got it and it does acro pretty well. So all in all, this is a recommend from me. I do recommend this. I'll put the link in the description. I especially love the remote. Here's what the remote looks like. Gimbals on this feel good. They're probably the same as the X-Lite. I don't have an X-Lite, but here's the T16 so you can kind of see the difference. QX7, they're way smaller than the QX7. And an X9D so you can kind of get an idea of how small these are. I'll throw up a picture of the X-Lite or the Tango 2. It's probably around that size because they are definitely smaller than normal. The goggles aren't bad, but the DVR situation, and they're not the most comfortable in the world. But I mean, I guess if you had a little bit of a smaller face, it wouldn't be such a big deal. I end up putting my nose kind of like in here and it kind of ended up fogging up the glass a little bit, but nothing crazy. I mean, it was pretty easy to deal with it. But I can't really complain about anything because again, 129 bucks, that is insane, especially for this. This remote is really nice. I wonder if it will uh, work with some of the other quads. I need to try to bind it to some other things. It's a very nice remote. Um, so just to, in comparison, this thing is like $200. This thing doesn't even fly as good as this, but it does have HD. So if you're not that into HD, this is like a hundred dollars less and you're getting uh goggles and a remote and that's it thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys on the next one got a lot of kits and stuff to review so keep a lookout peace <laughs>